so uh, so this is the question and um and i and i think this is one of those scenarios where people have a certain intuitions that you build up over time and the way we will we describe uh, forces in chapter three using Newton's laws, it's not quite the same as how you are used to describing forces in your everyday life. So here the scenario I want you to think about is just sitting in some vehicle. It could be an airplane, it could be a car, it could be BART, it could be, um, and uh, you have a familiar sensation of when you are, uh, as it starts to move, uh, it feels like something is pushing you backward. That's what you remember. Uh, that's the sensation that most people are familiar with. And um, I want to make sure that we know how to identify the real forces in that situation. So there are some real forces that are kind of familiar in most the setting. Um, so there's a, a upward push of the seat bottom. So, you know, you are sitting there, you're not uh, being, <laughs> you're not sinking down. So something is uh, supporting you and this is what's uh, supporting you. And I think a lot of people may have the temptation to check this because you feel like something is pulling you back. So maybe that's the, and what I want to <laughs> make sure that you don't check is that this is not it. This is not um, the sensation that you are being pulled backward, that everyone feels that. But the way we describe it is not as there being a backward force on you, there is an actually a forward push on you. And uh, oh, one more. So these two pair up to, they are not action reaction force pairs, but they have an equal magnitude, downward pull and upward push so that you are not accelerating vertically. So that's the correct answer. And uh, it's uh, one thing to know that that's the correct answer and another thing to feel like that is the correct answer. So what I want to uh, hope for those of you who maybe don't feel like that's the correct answer, maybe you feel this should be the correct answer and you know, it's not um, that, let me, uh, I want to try to illustrate with a simulation what, what, how those forces appear. So um, I didn't quite build this ahead of time. So I hope it will work out. So what I need to build is this. I need to build a car, one. Uh, let me, oops, uh, simulation too slow. Uh, let me just let this car come to stop. And you know, it's a car, so let me just cut out a section. So that, oops, uh, what am I doing here? Um, maybe let me just cut out a, oh. Why is it not letting me cut out a section? Um, mm. <laughs> Let me just cut out a section, uh, subtract. And so that this is my car. Uh, right now it doesn't look like a car. Let me make it into a car by applying this thruster tool. It can apply some force. I'm gonna just give it a toggle key so that I can, oops. Uh, I can toggle its action on and off. So just so you see how it works with the simulation running, I can toggle it so that it accelerates forward. So it's like an accelerating rocket car. So, <laughs> and uh, let me build a passenger in here. So this is going to be my passenger. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it so that um, this passenger is very not elastic. This way, um, so, you know, if the passenger is too elastic, this is what's gonna happen. As uh, the car accelerates forward, the passenger's gonna get, oh wait, doesn't get bounced forward. Well, you know, let me just leave it here. So, so this is my simulation of someone who's uh, sitting in an accelerating car. And I, let me just run the simulation so that you get a sense that this is a realistic simulation, even though it's very simplified, you know, car, accelerating, passenger, getting accelerated forward along with the car. I hope that looks very pedestrian and like what you'd expect to see. And uh, what I want to show is, let me turn off the velocity illustration and instead now show forces. And um, <laughs> so let me turn on gravity. And uh, there are some force vectors that you will have to ignore, I think. 
Yeah. So what I would ask you to ignore are these. Um, um, Actually, let me turn off gravity. That is one thing I can turn off. And the reason I can't quite turn off the normal force is that all the forces here are normal forces. So if I turn off normal force, you don't see any forces. So that's why I have to keep the normal force on. So let me just identify some of the forces that I would ask you to ignore because it's not relevant to our discussion. Those forces that I'm asking you to ignore are these um, normal force upward on the passenger and the uh, normal force downward on the car. Um, it, so, okay, that's there, but it's not very interesting to us. So please ignore that. And we also have the normal force at the two ends of the car that's uh, supporting the car so that it's not tilting, it's not sinking down. I would ask you to ignore these two normal forces as well. And so as the car accelerates forward, there should be some force from the thruster and let's see what other forces appear. Uh, you know, I don't actually know if it will show the thruster force. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it does. That's the external there. Okay. Oops. Uh, ah, sorry, I did something wrong. Um, I think, let's see here. I might have to change some of the scale because, yeah, um, that scale is tiny. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, let me... I'm gonna make the passenger super heavy because that's going to make the required force um, pretty large. Okay, um, wish I could just to get rid of vertical forces. That is annoying. Um, so if I just leave it here, it's gonna accelerate very slowly. So what I need to do is I need to make my thruster force larger. But okay, I think it's uh, kind of beginning to come together. So I'm gonna make my thruster force larger. I don't know, 50 newtons. Okay, uh, uh, let me run the simulation and I will stop it somewhere. Okay, so this whole thing is accelerating and these are the forces you see here. There's a, so this uh, thruster, that that's whatever is accelerating my car, that's my external force, wherever it's coming from. Um, in an airplane, that would be the jet engine that's uh, uh, pushing the other things back and providing the forward reaction force. Now, what I want you to focus on are the forces on the passenger. There's a, so this backward arrow here, that's not a force on the passenger. That's the force on this uh, on this car. There's a force that's pushing the car backward. The only force on the passenger, the force that's here, that's the forward force. And this forward force is pushing the passenger forward. <laughs> that's why uh, if you look at the velocities instead of forces, that's why the, the velocity of the passenger increases over time. That's what's accelerating the passenger forward. And the only real force that's there that's causing that to happen is a forward force that's coming from the back of the car. Um, so it, uh, I think that's the heaviest lift uh, that we do in physics, which is where uh, we all come with our previous life experiences, the things that uh, our um, kind of raw intuition, how we are used to um, explaining things and, um, and uh, what we are trying to do in this class is kind of realign that intuition, uh, realign how we describe things that even though, yes, uh, as the thing accelerates forward, you feel like we are being pushed backward, but it, it, that sensation of uh, that we are being pulled backward, it's uh, how we sense the forward push from the, the sick. 